Hello, welcome back to Brandon Sushi Live Noting. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the creations of this uh, Japanese or Chinese or Korean fans or Vietnamese fan. It's a, it's a paper fan basically. Um, this is probably the setup is kind of like 90% complete. There is a slight, um, just slight issue there, but um, other than that, it's kind of okay. Um, you can definitely modify it and kind of improve over over this. For the wooden part, I actually use just a skin modifier, just uh, for simplicity. This part was actually made. Um, I think it was. You can create this using cylinder, or in this case, I'm using a um, ring. I start with a ring note. I'm, I'm, I have two blender open here um, because I want to do like a just a quick breakdown for this. Um, how do I start making this? Basically, um, the fan it, itself, if you look at it, this is almost like a, if you have like a cylinder and you kind of um, open it up and lay out the, the UV, you get um, something that looks like a ring. So I'll, I'll show you in this video. Uh, using another blender if you were draw and if you are thinking like uh, parametrically sometimes it's more like modeling is more like a puzzle so that's a cylinder right you can open it up make it smaller and zero out the height and actually get rid of the cap and you have this uh, basically ring pattern and if you want to have uh, the fan, you just need to kind of open it up and then kind of delete delete some part of it. Uh, you don't need this part. And so for to do that, a quick way is to use uh, list slicing. So as you know, with Sphere Chalk, you can easily separate the vertices, edges, and polygon data. And for the fan, for example, we can simply um, like switch level and kind of basically get the shape of the fan this way I think it's more correct if we're doing it sideways like this uh, I'm not sure if I am doing it the same way yeah actually I'm doing it sideways as well so back to this guy so here we already have like a flat um, paper fan all we need to do is kind of uh, push this down and push this up and push this one down and up so it's almost like a like a zigzag pattern and I think that's what I did over here so let's quickly do a breakdown I think I did this in about half hour or one hour if I were to do it again here it's gonna take a while but uh, we can do things like this. I think it's pretty cool. So you can add a um, little bit of details. This one, this is actually more like a side effects. I think um, suddenly we have this ability to kind of close the fan and open it up. But this is actually more like um, side effects because I'm adding more details to the to the ring. I end up with a with a fan that's kind of closing up. A closing um, closing down uh, but um, this is basically I'm only slicing smaller part because we, we increase the, de the details so um, so it's kind of like a bonus you can have this but I think 32 is the number I chose if I make this smaller it might uh, actually crash no, I'm not gonna do that but if I increase this more and if I also increase the number here I make I might get a like a bigger fan I didn't set the parameter um, properly so yeah like I said if you're not careful sometimes it crashes you need to make sure all the numbers the parameters doesn't make like uh, divided by zero things like that so anyway you can always reopen it you can make changes I think this is the so this is the slicing that I was talking about there's a bit of math here and there um so that's list slice for the ring so now we have only the that uh, part and i think i 
I use delete loose to get rid of the extra points because we are only slicing the polygon uh, polygon data, the polygon face data, and we need to do, use delete loose to to kind of clean up the geometry and um, continue on. So I start with flat flat shapes like that. Continue on. I'm using um, list split and UV connections. I think this is probably for the for this part yeah this this part is a little bit tricky just slightly tricky you need to understand sphere chalk um, with sphere chalk you can kind of uh, easily separate um, the u and the v of the surface um, i think it comes from um, nerves parameters so you can kind of from these shapes, you can easily separate it into these two shapes, and then after you do that, uh, it becomes so easy if you wanna kind of move this up and down. And after you move up and down, you kind of connect it back together, so it's become uh, this kind of shapes, slightly deformed. There's probably a better way to do this, but this is one way I um, I did it. This is how I did it. Um, so we end up with this part. Um, and also for the these bits is um, I look at it just like um, some animal creature actually have the fingers like this and then it has this in between bits this is kind of similar um, I don't know spider doesn't do this I think maybe a frog or like a, like a flying creature animal they have these bits to, f to help them flying so yeah, this bit is just like um, I'm using skin modifier. It's very very simple. S sometimes it's the easiest shortcut. Um, like if you have like a, if you want to build a chair using sphere chalk, and then you want to build the leg, sometimes the easiest shortcut is just to make make use of skin modifier because you can easily uh, make a form like that. But if you want to do this properly um, for the fan. This bit should be more like um, like this kind of shape, like a very thin um, block maybe, and you kind of make a round corner. This is kind of a a quick quick way to do it. It's not a wrong way, but and if I'm not wrong, I make each one of these slightly higher. And I think I'm using um, this move and range i think that's kind of see it's a bit like a spiral stair so that made up of that part so now if you're they are separate now let's try increasing the number again make it a 64 i want to make like a bigger fan so I double the size and then I want to make this zigzaggy also work. I think I need to increase this number. See, it's just a parametric. It's just all these parameters working together. Uh, this bit. So now we have kind of more uh, more expensive paper fan if you buy this this is gonna cost can cost like hundreds dollar if it's the bigger it is takes to make a real thing is actually takes quite some time I think but yeah you got it for free now and you can I don't know if you can print this out maybe you can print these bits out or maybe laser cut is better so this is how you make Japanese fan um, and if you I'll give you this uh, the zip. If you still don't know how to use the zip, just ask me question how to use the zip. Uh, you just load the zip basically. But if you if I give you the export to GIS, if I give you the GIS, oh, oh the GIS will not work in this case. Anyway, the zip should work. I'll I usually kind of import it into upload it into github and then 
the zip is like really small because it if you zip a blend file it's very small and you all you need to do is to uh, import it using Spreadshop. Um, tap spacebar and then tap zip and then load the zip this too will work or you just grab it from here um, import it okay. from here let's get, go to desktop uh, I save it somewhere file save as desktop and then save blend as zip so now I get the zip file which is this guy you can of course unzip it but I think it's a lot faster if you just import it here ah it doesn't show up with the zip okay there you go this one non type is not subscriptable oh, interesting oh i guess just unzip it or if i put it if i put the link you just need to tap zip copy the link and then load the zip and it should work cannot get archived from internet maybe my computer is not connected but anyway that's pretty much how you want to build uh, like a paper fan uh, you can definitely improve uh, the setup and it's become like a, like a presets kind of thing you can always if you want to make Japanese fan or you just download this zip and it will work that's pretty much it thanks again for tuning in I'll see you in the next video bye